Okay, we have our kilowatt here. We're going to try to show how to relate um, for right sizing. And first thing we have to do is measure our wattage for the device we want. So in this setting here, that's showing my electric rate. It's a little bit behind the times. I think it's about 19 cents kilowatt hour. But anyway, we can go through the menu here real quick and show you. That will, with something plugged in, it's going to tick upwards and show us our kilowatt hours. This is the lapse time. I just plugged it in. It's been about two seconds. No, two minutes. Is that right? Yeah, I guess it would be. And then we have the the voltage, 125. And then there's our total cost in dollars, how much it would be. It figures that out for you if you have the right <laughs> amount in there. So you know approximately how much it takes to run for an hour. So it's a handy little device. What we're interested is in the wattage, the kilowatt hours here. So let's uh, let's find something to plug in here. Let's see what do I? Let's just take this light. We'll take that light, unplug it, and let's plug it into the kilowatt here. Hopefully I can. Next thing we're going to do is, I'm going to look at my watch real quick. It's 7.41. I'm going to reset this. It goes into reset. And we're going to check back at 8.41. should be about an hour. Got 120 and a half volts cost the rate that's the one I want to watch the kilowatt hours so we'll check back and see what this uh, I think it's a fluorescent light in there pretty sure it is yep so we'll just see what that comes out with here in an hour check back then okay here we are 50 minutes later it finally turned over 0 0.01 kilowatt hour so now we have a reading we know every 50 minutes that we're going to use 0 0.01 of a kilowatt hour now I should pick something that and maybe I will I'll pick something that has a higher wattage because um, there's definitely going to be a big difference there but in this example that one light every 50 minutes this is what it uses You've seen the kilowatt and its potential. Now I want to tie this into how we're going to right size your battery bank. You're off grid. The only way you're going to be able to store electricity is with your batteries. That's the point that we have to understand your loads, your desired runtime that you wish, i.e. how big is your battery bank, and planning that capacity. So let's... Uh, Let's, I'm, I'm throwing these notes up here so you guys can see it. Stop it. It also helps me stay on track. Um, but let's, let's try to understand this previous example, what we had of the one light. So what I had was basically 10 watts every 50 minutes on that light. So we need to figure out what it's going to be in an hour. So you take the, the 10 watts or kilowatt number there and divided by 50 minutes and that's going to give us a number for one minute before I go much further I have to I'll confess that you guys there's 95 percent of my viewers that are men and every one of them loves math I'm being sarcastic there is a lot of math with solar You're gonna to have to get used to it or hire a professional so let's get back to it. So we got the our rate off the kilowatt meter. We divide that by 50 minutes. This gives us our per minute number. We take that per minute number, we times it by 60 minutes. Now we have a true hour, kilowatt hour value. So then we can add this to our spreadsheet, right? We know what it is. So I have a spreadsheet I've made up. 
basically you have your watt hours and on this fluorescent lamp we got one lamp we know it's 12 watts or it's 0 0.012 kilowatt hours let me step back and give you some more information here i got there's a lot of how to's from the alt -e store.com they have a lot of good information the spreadsheet is basically these steps that we're outlining right here. This is a fairly, how do I want to put it? It's a fairly average. Um, you don't want to go over 50% discharge on your batteries. Temperature matters. You know, you may not even want to go to 40. Anyway, the your runtime, that's going to be how many days you want to go. And then the temperature coefficient, like my batteries are outside at 30 degrees. You're going to have a lot different performance than somebody who has them that's living full time off grid in a nice warm cabin. So this is just let you know, this is where I got it right here. Altistore.com. Step back to the spreadsheet here. Let's get, and in the previous clip there, we had that one fluorescent lamp, right? Number of devices. We have one. We know it draws 12 watts per hour. Here we got the formula in this one that's the same number that was on the kilowatt right but what does that really mean kilo 1000 watts per hour so we're taking 1000 divided by equals that that's simple math anyway what we're trying to do is we're going to come over here and this spreadsheet is working towards the total watt hours per day per device that this is what we need to know and that's what these formulas, you know, dictate. I have one number of device. It's that on the kilowatt meter. How many days? This is an arbitrary number that you will have to decide. Is it three hours? Is it four hours? What do you think you'll run this? This is where you get to play and control your life, your destiny there on your battery bank. I like to be a little bit uh, liberal. Give yourself a room, room for expansion. You know, you can always say, glad I have a little bit more than what I thought. And with solar, I think uh, just about everybody finds out that they, they try to save a penny and they're always wishing they went bigger or had something else. So in this series, what we're trying to determine here is our total usage, which in this case, I have a bunch of devices put in the spreadsheet. And it comes out to 1,964 watt hours per day. This is the total I'd use in one day. Now we come up to the days of runtime. Let's say I want to, you know, I don't want to recharge. I have no solar panels, and I want to be able to have this run for at least two days. Cloudy sky, solar eclipse, whatever, right? I want two days of runtime. You end up with this number right here, which is the total watt hours for that scenario. Per day times two, 39.28. Now we get into the topic of depth of discharge. And this is on your batteries. How low do you want to go on your battery discharge? Batteries consist of cycles. If you have an RV, you got your deep cycle batteries and you bring them all the way down to 25%. Pretty much anything, uh, I'm going to say 50%. Some numbers are lower. Some will go as deep as 60. But anytime you go beyond that tolerances, um, they call that a a cycle. Um, there's only so many cycles in a battery. You know, I, I forget what that number is. I try never to cycle it. It, it. You're killing the life of your battery. Most batteries are rated for seven years, um, 10 years if you really take care of them. So in this scenario, well, I'm in a different spreadsheet. I should go over here to the one that's average. In this scenario here, same thing. I've just changed some, uh, the depth of discharge. 40% is pretty average, i.e. we're going to go from 100%, we're going to draw it down to 90, 80, 70, and 60. That difference from 60 to 100, we've drawn down 40% of that battery. Again, we don't want to go to the 50 mark. A lot of, uh, I'm not going to go there. Well, that's, that's a different session. So this is an average, 40%. So we take that watt hour total. And we divide that by 0.4. That gives us this number here. Now we have a temperature coefficient. At about, batteries like 68 degrees, but at a 60 degree, 
temp, it's at 1.1. If it was 30 degrees, it would be 1.4, I believe. Anyway, that's going to increase this number. It's going to go up substantially because you're, you're going to take this number times the coefficient, which in this case at 60 degrees is going to be 1.1. It gives us that number right there. And then uh, let's see here. I have three different scenarios for battery banks. We have a 48 volt system. And what we're measuring here in this column is amp hours. If you look at a battery that's a deep cycle battery for solar, it's not going to list cranking amps. It's going to list amp hours. This is what a battery is rated at. This is kind of what we're determining what kind of battery we need, not what kind, um, how many amp hour, the minimum amp hour battery that we would need for this scenario. It's a lot of work to get all this just to find out that you need a 300 amp, or in this case, two days, 227 amp hours. If we just kick this up to three in my calculation here, you can see we need uh, a 340 amp hour battery with a 48 volt system. So now let me back something up here that's important with amp hours if you're not familiar with that. Most battery banks are comprised of six volt batteries. To get 48 volts, you need eight batteries, six volts times eight batteries in a series string makes 48 volts. So the more six volt batteries you add, the higher your voltage will be. That is not the case with your amp hours, your amperage. If you have one 340 amp hour battery, it's 340 amps. If you have eight 340 amp batteries, it's 340 amp hour rating. That does not change, just your voltage. Just to clarify that. So this gives you an idea. Now, just on all this, this just tells you the minimum amount when you're looking at batteries, what you would need. If you want a 12 volt system, you better start shopping for some batteries out there that have 1,362 amp hours and you're gonna need two of them, right? 24, you're gonna need 681 and you're gonna need four of them. So this kind of lays the structure of your planning and capacity. Now there's going to be down the road, we're going to talk about solar panels and charging and, and you know, how that's all going to fit in, where you live, amount of sunlight, etc. But this is pretty much determining your runtime, no solar panels. Let's say you're charging a generator, which you can do. I've done it. No solar panels. You charge it, let it run for two days. You manually kick off your generator. This is the scenario right there. This is where, this is the basic of planning your battery bank. First of all, we need to know what kind or how many amp hours is the minimum we would be looking at.